Hello, Internet, and welcome back to SEO Explained, Episode 3. We get a lot of questions from potential clients and clients about, well, SEO. Uh, we've tried to compile a bunch of them for this series, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Uh, my name's Adam Truskowski. I'm joined today by Kyle Roof. Hello, Kyle. Hello, hello. We're going to try and answer as many of these as we can. So let's get started. How long does it take to see results? The main consideration is is the competition for for that for a particular term. Gotcha. Uh, the more competitive a term is, the longer it will take because the more things you have to do, you know, the more uh, on page SEO you need to do, the more supporting content you need to do, the more backlinks you need to do, and those things just take time. Gotcha. If you are, especially if you're the small fish in a big pond, right? If you're um, the smallest, if you're a brand new startup, uh, time is much longer than if you're an established website up against even bigger established websites, in most cases. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the And often the reason is just because you don't have as much as they do on the site. Yeah. You know, bigger sites rank better or rank faster for, for more terms. But there's also uh, something to consider would be there is a level that Google will trust you immediately. You know, that's, that's your natural tier. That's, yep. the, that's your natural authority level. And if you write a piece of content going after a keyword that's in your tier, you will often rank for that immediately. You know, it's just a smaller site or, or a newer site is going to be at a lower tier. Uh, but you can go after terms that are above your tier, but to go for those terms, it will require a boost. It will require doing something to have Google like your site or like your page that is for that term that's outside your tier. So you have to do more on page or more off, off page. page yeah. But if you can do in, in your keyword research, if you can identify what your tier is and then do research to find terms in that tier, you can actually, even for competitive terms, you can be quite successful uh, and, and win terms quickly simply by really out-researching your competitors and then posting content that is within your natural tier. The other nice thing about that too is as your tier rises, uh, you can go after uh, more difficult terms yeah, and win terms. those quicker as well. Awesome. Another question we get all the time is, how do you measure the success of an SEO campaign? Some of the main KPIs uh, you're looking for is that you're gaining keywords, uh, you're gaining impressions, and then you're gaining clicks. Um, I often like to think of it as your website is a storefront, and right now you have people walking in front of the store. The main thing we want to do is get more people walking in front of that store. Gotcha. We want to increase your visibility. We want to increase the foot traffic around your website. And then that, once that happens, you're going to increase clicks. And then with those increased clicks, you should increase conversions as well. Gotcha. Next one, how important is it that the agency or team you work with has experience in your industry? It's good for them to have experience in the industry, but it's not completely critical. You know, like they don't need to know the industry as well as you do, and, mm -hmm. and nor should they. Mm -hmm. you know, but they do need to know how to do the research. You know, they do need to know how to create the content or at least be able to find a way to get that content done. But once those kind of hurdles are done, they don't need to know the industry quite as well as as, as, as you do. Essentially, yeah. the keywords differ, but the SEO core is kind of the same. That's right. You know, if it's a medical profession, you don't need doctors doing SEO. You know, they need to understand the concepts yeah. of what they're doing, but you don't actually have to have a, a doctor doing the keyword research. What you don't want is your SEO doing the doctor work. Probably not. Yeah, okay. I would avoid that. <laughs> um, I watched a YouTube video. Yeah, right? Everyone's an expert. Uh, how do you stay up to date with changes in the SEO landscape? The big thing is that, is that you know, I run tests. Like that's, that's the biggest thing. I'm, I am testing. I don't need to rely on a third party to tell me what's going on in SEO because we're doing SEO. Yeah. You know, we're figuring it out and we're creating new techniques and strategies based on what is actually happening in SEO right now. Gotcha. Next one we get a lot is what level of involvement does the client have to be in the SEO process? You know... Uh, kind of gets back to that industry question. It's like, you know, informing like what is going on in the industry and that helps us drive the keyword research, sure. you know, those explaining to us what is, what this industry is about. They're going to be involved probably in the content creation yeah, because there's obviously going to be brand and tone, uh, you know, how should this sound, you know, what do you, how do you want this to go or be presented on your website? So there's going to be a lot of, um, uh, back and forth there, but then also depending on, on, what they're interested in and what they're going through. This is a collaborative process. Sure. You know, we're going to talk with our clients about, okay, what are your goals? You know, where are you trying to get to? You're here. Where do you want to go? And then our job as, as the SEOs is to help guide that plan. 
Sure. But that's a, that's a real collaborative process. It's not just like, this is your SEO and, and go, but it's like, we're trying to work out a way so that we can work together to yeah. get to where we need to go. It also depends on the size of their team. If they've got writers and they've got devs, that's a different collaboration than if they don't, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, and also you think about, you know, our team can seamlessly integrate with, with whatever team is there, Yeah. you know, and then, so maybe they can, they already have a content writing team. That's great. We can then help create the content plan. Uh, and with the keyword research, or maybe they don't have a content team at all. That's great. We can help Take provide care of that. Yeah. Kind of, so whatever the situation is, because uh, you know, two situations are exactly the same, but the pieces that they have in place, you know, we can integrate into that and uh, provide the support and, and, and help with it in whichever aspect they need help with. Or the out-of-house, in-house That's right. SEO team. Yeah. Um, next one, what metrics do you use to track progress? So we're looking at um, uh, gaining keywords, uh, impressions and clicks would be the big, the big three. Um, okay. but then if there are goals, you know, conversion stuff that can all be tracked as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, gaining backlinks, losing backlinks, those types of things can also be tracked as well. I know that, um, we also do uh, conversion rate optimization audits for some clients, especially in the e-com space. Yeah. yeah. Which big help. For sure, because you know, once you get that traffic, you you do want them to convert. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of the point. Yeah, um, do the strategies that that we use ever result in penalties or decreased rankings in traffic? No, we stay. We're not just inside the guidelines, but we're well inside the guidelines. The techniques that we have developed are all within Google's guidelines, and they're not even. You know, there's an idea of gray hat. You know, mm -hmm. there's white hat and black hat we talk about. Some people talk about gray hat like, well, it's somewhere in a fuzzy, in, yeah. in a fuzzy place. You know, but we don't have to make justifications for the things that we are, we do. We are completely within uh, the boundaries. But then, you know, a lot of people come to us because they know that. Yeah. And because they did something outside of those things, and now they need to try to get back into Google's. Yeah, they're they're repenting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, the, a lot of the clients that we work with, they can't afford to lose their domain. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm sorry, large insurance company, good news, your SEO team has, you know, torched your domain and we need to change the domain. It, that's not a good not conversation. Happen, yeah. 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 So there's no point in even and risking it. And as I said on, on a previous episode, we don't need to do that. You yeah. know, really the, the black hat thing it has a white hat method. It just takes more time. Yeah. And actually sometimes it takes just more creativity. And so people don't have the creativity to do the problem solving to get from here to there. And so they take the shortcut because honestly, that might be the only option for them when they, they don't know how to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll just push the button rather than actually do the, the, do the work. Do yeah. the work. Cool. Um, so this is one of my favorites. I tried SEO in the past and it didn't work. Why would anything be different now? Well, the biggest difference now is going to be transparency. Often when it didn't work, the the clients when we talk to them they didn't know what was being done sure you know so they didn't they didn't have any concept of what was actually happening so one of the biggest things that they're going to see here is that they're going to know what's going on you know we have these techniques uh and we will show you how we're doing it. so anything that is going on to the website or being done for the website is going to be completely seen it's it's completely transparent mm -hmm. um you can never guarantee that seo is going to to work it's, it's a game of probability. Yep. But the idea is that you want to do as much as you can in this a repeatable process to give yourself the best outcome, the likelihood of a positive outcome. Yeah. That's, that's the whole game. You're trying to do as much as you can correctly, the things that you know work, so that you have the best chance for success. That's really what we're driving for. And so the techniques that we put together are the things that we know have that best chance. Uh, you just said something, uh, the techniques we put together, that's another... A key point is that we don't just everyone doesn't get the same thing right right it's it's custom per their needs the the, the core seo uh tactics and strategies are all there but how those fit together is different for each client well because every website has a different history correct you know and they have different people that have done different things and in addition to that you tack on that everybody has different goals yep in broad strokes everyone wants more clicks and sales and i mean that's the problem they have different how what is a, a successful outcome is often different company to company. Yeah. And so when you have different histories and different uh, desired outcomes, that then must create a, uh, a bespoke strategy for, for each individual client. There, so then you can't shoehorn people into um, this type of a package. Yep. You know, it has to be customized to what their needs actually are. And... Uh, that's something, you know, it kind of can get collaborative too, because once we understand what the goals are, 
you know, and then we understand where the website is. Okay, we have these techniques. We think that this is going to get you from here to there. But then that's also a process that we can discuss that so that the, the clients know exactly what is going to happen with their website. And it also allows us, I, I know within campaigns, it allows us to kind of evolve that campaign right. as things evolve. Because what you don't want to do is be locked in, especially with all the algorithmic updates that have happened in the past 12 months, be locked into something that isn't working. It allows us to be a little more flexible. Or if you had a package that was like 10 links a month. Is, yeah. that, is that good? Yeah. Is that bad? Yeah. For your website, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. But who knows? Like, or do you need more Yeah. <laughs> or less? But the idea is that when you can, you have the flexibility the uh, the ability to adapt and then the transparency to go with it, you know, then we can make those decisions like, okay, this is what we need to do in this situation mm -hmm. because, you know, the, the goal is this or the desired outcome is this and this is what we think we'll do it. Yep. Uh, my industry is too competitive. How can I win at SEO against a big company who's been doing it for years? The first thing to think about, one, is that there's a decent chance that they're not doing it. Uh, they're not doing SEO very well. Yeah. And just because they're a large company does not immediately mean uh, that they're excellent at SEO. But well, if we want to assume that maybe they are, mm -hmm. there are always going to be gaps. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the large companies are not going to be going after certain terms. There's going to be research that we can do where we can out-research those competitors and find those gaps and fill those gaps mm -hmm. and often create extremely successful SEO campaigns uh, by kind of going where they're not. Yeah. You know. Go, Staying on the fringes. Go where they ain't. Yeah. You know, as, as they say, like, and when we can fill those spots and, um, and produce excellent SEO results uh, and by not even going directly head to head with those competitors. We don't need to. Yeah. We can go around. The other thing is, is uh, there's a Benjamin Franklin said it about investing. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the second best time is today. Like the, the longer you wait, the further behind you get. That's true. So. And, you know, the only page that can't rank is the is a blank page. Yeah. So, you know, get something going now. Yeah. And ultimately, too, when you go after some of those terms, you know, that are that are maybe around a, a major term, as your site, as you start winning those, your site gets stronger. Yeah. You know, it allows you then to become more competitive. And even if somebody's got years ahead of you, you can still get in the game mm -hmm. and you can still become very competitive with them on terms uh, it really kind of takes the right approach. Sure. You know, and so instead of doing that direct approach, you'll be kind of going around. But as we do that around, we then get closer to actually being able to get after those big terms. The bigger terms, yeah. yeah. Um, with all the social media content platforms like Instagram, TikTok uh, that are out there, is SEO worth it? Well, SEO is complementary. So if you have something that goes viral, you can use that in an SEO campaign. So you've got your TikTok that takes off. That's great. You can embed that into a post on your site. And if you have proper interlinking and it's part of a strategy, you can then leverage that to get even more traffic to your website. Mm -hmm. You know, you can we call it shareable content. Yeah. So you can have content that is meant to be shared yeah. and you can then have that on your site and it can complement whatever success you're having, say, on, on, a, on a different social media platform. You can have that success. You can bring that success to your site. It's only going to benefit your site and benefit uh, your SEO efforts. I've seen sites that have uh, podcasts, much like this one, uh, with hundreds of videos over the past you know, several years with the video embed and just like one line, one sentence. And I'm, you, you got you to gotta take that content, rip it, and get it on the page because that, just that video is not doing you any good. No, it, it, it's the text that you put on. But what's nice is that if you've got that type of content, that gives you like an entire yes. vault of, yeah. of content that can be used. You know, a lot of people don't realize a lot of their assets like that are excellent for SEO. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of have them sitting somewhere. It's kind of like, you know, like if you make a brochure, for example, you can turn that brochure content, and all you meant for it was just to be passed out at a, at a convention. Yep. You can take that content and turn that into posts. Yep. You can reuse all that content. It's also It can be very, very good for your SEO efforts. Awesome. I have a new business, and I need to focus on things that will generate immediate return. Is SEO a good fit for me? Probably not. <laughs> if, you, if you need an immediate return, that's, that's pay-per-click. Yeah. Because you, on day one, can get into the number one spot. Yep. You know, that's, that's as long how, as your budget can withstand. That's right. As long as your budget <laughs> can do it. And you can, but you can do that on day one in PPC, and you, uh, you cannot do that. In, in day one on SEO. But they all they are very complimentary. Absolutely. Um, so you can get, uh, as you get into a campaign, you can get really good targets to go after, keyword targets to go after organically based off of the ones that are converting from PPC. And then also retargeting is much cheaper 
than cold outreach or cold campaigns on, on PPC as well. I, I actually really like that strategy because um, one of the worst things you can do is you've got a keyword, it takes six months to win, and you finally win and you're on page one, and then you realize that nobody wants to to <laughs> buy that product yeah. you know, or to, to use that service. If you build it, they will not always right. come. Yeah. <laughs> but you can learn that in PPC quite quickly. Yeah. You know, like, okay, maybe we need to change this messaging or maybe we need to focus on different things because when it comes to buying online, they might not want to buy these things over here, but they will buy these things from you. Yep. And you can learn that quite quickly through a, through a PPC campaign. Uh, fail fast. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can also use the landing pages too. You can start testing your messaging mm -hmm. uh, on your landing pages. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can also start to get a feel for, um, as they score in PPC, uh, what scores higher. Uh, within Google and it's a it's a different algorithm, but it does give you a little bit of insight on yep. on like how much content we need to get on this page and mm -hmm. how technical it may or may not need to be that those sorts of things. Yeah, awesome. Uh, how can you tell if the agency I'm considering are any good? First and foremost, you, 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 it needs to be transparent. You, you can't be you can't work with an agency that is not going to tell you what they're doing to the site. If um, they should be able to explain the techniques that they're doing. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, they might not want to tell you the IP exactly, but um, they should be able to tell you what, what they're doing, and they should be able to show it to you. Sure. Um, so I, I, I get asked from time to time, like, how do I know if something is in, how do I know if they're doing everything white hat? Because they might not know the, they, they're saying something, like, this is, is, is this black hat or not? Yeah. And how can I know? A big, uh, I like to give the ick test. Does it feel icky? <laughs> You know, then it's probably outside. Yeah. You know, there's kind of like that gut reaction. Do you feel good about this? Yeah. Like, would you explain this to someone of what you're doing? And would you feel weird about explaining it? And if the answer is yes, I'd feel weird. That's, that might be. Stay, stay away from yeah. it. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're within the guidelines. So another thing is, is this agency any good? They should be, ha they should have effective techniques that are white hat. Uh, they should be doing regular reporting. I get. I'm amazed when I talk to people and they're like, I haven't had a report from my mm -hmm. SEO agency. I haven't talked to my SEO in three months. Yeah, like yeah. what? Yeah. Like what's going on? So you should have a monthly report. Keep in mind that you know, we like to work in sprints, in mm -hmm. three-month sprints, because one month performance isn't necessarily going to show you what's actually going on. And looking at it in three months or in six month sprints is a much clearer picture of if something was successful or not. But each month you should be getting a report. Yeah. And that report's going to detail what was done maybe why it was done, and what the current performance. Yeah, any uh, movement that we've seen. Yeah. And you want to see also kind of two different views. You want to see uh, the entire site as a whole, mm -hmm. but you also want to see specific pages that you're working on. Because yeah. remember, as we discussed, Google ranks pages. Mm -hmm. So your SEO team should be doing work to a page, mm -hmm. and you should know what page that is, mm -hmm. and then you should see how that page is performing. So if you're not getting a report that's telling you, all right, we worked on this page, this is what we did, yeah. and this is how it's doing, you know, you're, how are you going to know what's really going on with your site at all. So reporting is a huge aspect of, and when you're in that process of, of you know, vetting the agency, you can ask to see a, a sample report. Sure. You know, because then also you have to think with your goals, when you show this report to anybody that you need to show it to, is it, is it going to match with the company's goals? You know, is, yeah. is this all going to be a good fit? Those are things you want to figure out, I think, quite early before you. This, this may be a, uh, a step above if you're super new to, to SEO, but if they send back like a, a SEMrush or an Ahrefs report oh, instead yeah. of a Search Console report, yeah, just like like a uh, like an automatically generated report yeah. from a third party tool yeah. is not really going to tell you too much. There's there's pros and cons to those tools, but going directly with it, and we talked about this, going directly with the source is is the best option. And you should have a customized report. Yeah, gotcha. All right, well, that's it for episode three. Uh, Stay tuned for episode four, where we talk about some actual successful SEO strategies that you can implement. This has been Kyle Roof and myself, Adam Truskowski. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us. And if you'd like to learn more on how your business could benefit from SEO, come chat with me at hvseo.co slash booking. We'll see you soon.